As the weather starts to turn colder, many people put away their butane gas canister stoves with the understanding that they don't work well in the winter. And that's true of most stoves. However, there are a few stove technologies that will allow you to use them as the temperature drops. One is the gas pressure regulated valve. It allows the stove to work in colder temperatures and also as the tank empties out by maintaining an even pressure throughout. And the other one is a stove with a design known as a preheat tube or a generator tube and that allows the stove to be used with butane when the canister is inverted so that it flows in a liquid form through the stove. Well that's where this stove comes in and this is the Camping Moon XD1 turbo remote gas canister stove designed specifically for use in very cold temperatures. If you're interested in hearing more about it, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Camping Moon for sending out the XD1 turbo stove so that I could share it with you. So what we'll do, of course, is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll talk about the stove's key features, its specifications, its performance. I'll give you some demonstrations on it, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, just before we take a closer look at the Camping Moon XD1 turbo stove, I'll share what else it came with. This is the plastic storage box that it arrived in. Stores in nice with a little bit of extra room. If you want to put a few things in it, we'll put that out of the way. There is, of course, the manual with all the instructions on how it's used, as well as this warranty information. And one more device. This is a stand which will allow the gas canister, while it's attached to the regulator valve, to be turned upside down so that it can be operated in fluid motor, liquid mode. And I'm going to be demonstrating that, of course, in a few moments time, aren't we, Lee? Put that aside, bring the stove back in. So just a couple of the key features of this stove before we get into its specifications. It's kind of uh, unique in its design. Inside of the stove, you can see there is a large plate that's actually quite a large diameter stove. And inside of that plate, you can see the jets. There are 50 of those jets and they are actually angled. They don't feed straight in their angles. What happens is it creates a uh, tornado type of an effect, a vortex, and that's where they get the name the turbo stove. So it, it allows the flame to be very concentrated as it comes out and not to disperse or to fuse across it. Something else I want to point out is that's a cast aluminum plate and I just had it on probably five minutes ago for uh, some practice with it and uh, it's still warm. It's still warm, so it holds the heat quite a bit. And that's also important for a winter stove. You want it to maintain its heat. So if you turn it off and turn it back on, it reduces the warm up time for the unit. However, there is a bit of a downside to it. One, it adds significant weight to the stove itself. And the other thing, of course, is that it takes a long time to cool off, at least in normal room temperatures. Oh, in the cold during the winter, it'll probably cool down much faster. Now, a couple of other things is look how wide the stances on this. I'm going to uh, put it back in its folded state in a moment so that you can see how compact it gets. But it has a good wide stance with three legs and three pot stands. And the pot stands, are they fold in and out. So this can hold larger pots, much larger pot, maybe two liter or even larger. Again, also a really good feature for a stove used in the winter time because you may find yourself with the need to uh, melt a lot of snow to create water. If you don't have fresh running water because everything is frozen, but you do have snow and you want to melt it down to water, a good powerful stove which will accept a large pot is really useful for that. And of course, as I mentioned, the other feature is the addition of this. Now, a lot of stoves will have preheat tubes like this one here. I'll talk more about that in a moment. But they don't come with the ability to flip the canister upside down and be stable. You kind of have to prop them up. This is nice in that it's propped up and stable and ready to use, very easy to use, in fact, as I'll demonstrate. All right, let's go over a few of the specifications for this stove. First off, the weight. Yes, it's a little bit heavy for a gas canister stove, coming in at 13.76 ounces or 390 grams, less than a pound. But, uh, well, what do you get for all that weight? Well, it's considering that it is a, a winter stove and some of the features I've mentioned, I think you get quite a bit. We'll talk more to that. 
It's got a powerful rating, 16,719 BTUs, also expressed as 4.9 kilowatts. That's a powerful rating for a stove. It has a 4-inch diameter across the burner, which is 10 centimeters, and a standing height right now of 2.9 inches, or 7.3 centimeters. Now, let me just put the stove back into its compact state so you can see how that works. So you fold the pot stands out of the way. And by the way, here's something, I might as well say it now so I don't have to mention it again later, is the pot stands themselves, they do fold in. You don't use it in this position like this, I suppose you could, but here's what I've been getting to notice is uh, they're made of stainless steel and you can probably see some discoloration from the heat on these things. These are actually still a little bit warm as well. But there is a tiny amount of warping uh, occurring, at least uh, I think that's what it is. I can't see it, but what happens is as you fold these over, they get quite tight and it takes a bit of work to get them open. Certainly not a deal breaker. In fact, that may be seen as a plus. I only mention that because it's considerably stiffer than when I first got it. But I think I like that in that it, they just don't flop around like they sometimes can. All right, so let me just fold those back over again. Now, the legs rotate down and back. So they will rotate in to the body of the stove like this in that fashion and then they greatly reduce the height and make the stove much more compact than of course you would just wrap your uh, stainless steel braided gas hose around it and sit it inside of the white storage box. All right, let me just put it back into its open position. So you rotate the legs down and then up, down and then up, down and then up, and they lock into position like that. Get the hose out there, pot stands out. There you go, all ready to go. So very wide and very stable, makes for a very safe stove during the winter time. All right, let's move on to some demonstrations. Okay, I've turned all the lights off with the exception of one so that I can light the stove safely before turning that light off. Then you'll be able to see the flame pattern much better. So just before I do, and the reason I'm saying this now is uh, it's a gas stove, like most, it's kind of noisy. This one is not real noisy. I've got some that are like just like jet engines, but still there's a considerable amount of noise coming from this. So I want to talk before I light it up. And first, the only thing I want to say is I did a boil test on this. Well, a couple of boil tests and took the average of them so that I'd have an idea. Yes, I'm doing this indoors, these, this testing, but it's just to create a standard or a, a baseline that I can work forward into the future. And basically what I got is a two cups of water, 500 milliliters. I got it to boil in two minutes, 55 seconds with seven grams of fuel used. It's not the most thrifty, most gas economy stove that I've had, but for the size of it and for the power, that's actually very, very impressive. Since the pot I was using was only about 13 centimeters in diameter, I think I would have done even better with a larger, maybe 15, 16 inch diameter pot on there because of course then the heat would be, less of it would be escaping up around the side, but still very, very impressive. Okay, the other thing I'll mention is that it does not come with a piezoelectric lighter, so you will need some type of a flame source to get it going. So let's do that now. I've got it turned down a little bit low and while it's down low, let's see if I can show you the flame pattern inside. That's pretty nice, right? isn't it? All the jets are firing inwards. Uh, it'll show up more as I turn the light off, but you get that turbo effect taking place. So let's do that. Now you can should be able to see the turbo. Now, as I turn it up, it gets more intense, but it's not a lot noisy. So yeah, you're right, it's not as noisy as <laughs> some stoves can be. Uh, yeah, you can start to see the tips of the pot stand start to uh, heat up as they would, and that's where the yellow is coming from. It's actually coming off of the stainless steel from the heat from the flame. All right, so once again, the lights are still all turned off with the exception of one, which I'll be turning off again once I get the stove uh, lit up, but I wanted to show how you attach this plate. This is the plate that allows you to turn the gas canister upside down. So right on top of the valve, there's a little button, if you will, and then there's a keyhole on the plate. And it's simply a matter of putting it on like that, fits on quite snugly, and turning it upside down. 
It's just that easy. And then you still have access to the valve for turning the gas flow on and off. And I don't think I gave you the best view of this, but now you should be able to see that brass preheat tube or generator, it goes by both names, and how it operates. So maybe I can turn it around so you can see how this is going to function. Move this over here. So the gas is going to run out of this canister in liquid form and not in a vapor state. It's going to run through the tubing. It's going to reach right here where it attaches to the generator tube. It's going to run up through, through the flame itself so that it heats up and that turns it into a gas vapor so that when it goes into the bottom of the stove and out through the jets, it's turned into a gaseous state. All right, so that's how they basically function. Let's get this thing operating. Bring it over here. Again, I have to have my flame source, so let's turn this on. What I'll note, tell you now is sometimes you'll see them start to puff a little bit as they warm up, but after a few minutes, that puffing tends to go away. It's actually burning more intensely now than it was when it was in gas state as opposed to liquid state. So, because that's turned down pretty low, let me just turn the light off again. So that is wide open. And now you can start to see that little bit of a puffing taking place. There is a lot of heat coming off of that. That puffing eventually slows down and eventually goes away as everything heats up. Uh, it's not doing anything that's not supposed to. That's exactly the way they're intended to operate. So there you go, working in liquid mode. You know, it occurred to me just after I turned the camera on that I should have mentioned this, but there is one thing that you need to be aware of if you are not used to using a gas canister stove like this in the inverted liquid flow mode. And that is when you turn the flow of the gas off, it can take 30 seconds or so before the stove actually goes out because all that liquid has to run through the tubing, through the generator, be vaporized and burnt off before the stove eventually goes out. So don't panic. I know the very first time I used one, I said, what, what did I do wrong here? It's not going out. It just takes a couple seconds for that gas to finish running through the tube. So I just wanted to mention that for people that maybe not a, haven't experienced it before. Okay, let's wrap this video up with a few comments. So the first thing I really do need to say is, and then full disclosure, I have not used this in very cold temperatures. I haven't had it long enough, but I I uh, guarantee you I'll be taking it out this winter as the temperatures get cold and I'll be using it for, well, demonstrations, if nothing else, but cooking meals on because it's just that much more convenient. It's actually a lot more convenient than a wood stove. Maybe not as fun as a wood stove, but it is very convenient to use in cold weather because of its design. So I'll be taking it out and if I report back any, or if I find anything uh, about it that I think you should know that I haven't already talked about, then of course I'll bring that back. And the other thing is you can use this, yes, with butane and isobutane or an isobutane winter mix, which means it has some propane mix in it and you'll get even more benefit. You can take it down to a colder temperature or with the adapter, you can use a one pound propane tank that has a Lindell valve on top, which will accept the valve that comes on the stove itself. And you can use that. That'll take you down to an even colder temperature. So there are some options in its operation. Now, of course, carrying the one pound tank around is adding significant weight, but if you actually need the, the, this thing to work in the coldest of temperatures, it may be the way you wanna go. All right, that's all the information I have with it. I've been using this for a little while, not a great deal of time. I have taken it out into the woods, but as I mentioned, not in very, very cold weather. I will be doing that this winter coming. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section below. I'll be giving you the specifics on the stove as well as the link, links, a couple of links, in fact, both Amazon and Camping Mood, where you can go and take another look at it. It's actually very reasonably priced considering the quality of the build. I'm quite impressed with the quality of the stove, its operation, compared with its price. All right, until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.